Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, How to Land Your Dream Job During Difficult Times, presented by Anish Majumdar. My name is Mara from Ivy Exec. It'll be my pleasure to moderate today's session. Before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items for our audience. First of all, all attendees are currently in listen-only mode, which means we can't hear you or see you. However, we encourage you to participate in the GoToWebinar control panel. You can submit questions throughout the presentation um, at the corresponding tab, and we'll do a, a Q&A session at the end through the last 15 minutes. Second, we are recording today's session, so you'll receive a copy of the recording via email in the next day or two. So keep an eye on your inbox and you can watch it again and see any parts that were particularly interesting to you. So now that we have those details taken care of, I'd like to introduce today's panelist. Anish Majumdar is an executive career coach who specializes in helping people generate opportunities with real meaning and impact. He's among the top 1% of career experts on LinkedIn. As a former journalist and film and TV actor, he has struggled with entering completely new fields, communicating what sets him apart and playing the hidden game of getting ahead. And he knows the transformative benefits that are unleashed when you do. You can check out his career videos at helloanish.com and connect with him on LinkedIn to receive daily career tips and advice. It's a pleasure to have you here Anish and I'm excited to get started. So I'll hand it off to you. Oh my gosh, thank you Mara. Uh, it's always a pleasure and, and thank you for, um, Thank you for making it so easy. Thank you for the kind introduction. And um, most of all, thank you to each and every one of you um, out there who has chosen to look at this moment of adversity we're facing. And instead of cowering, instead of, of retracting and going into this fear and panic mode, you know those people, they're the ones who are responsible for uh, those empty shelves with the, uh, with the toilet paper and all of that, We've, and the paper towels. I appreciate each and every one of you for not doing that and caring enough about your career and what you're doing to ask, hey, you know what? No, no, I'm not, I'm not accepting defeat for something that I had nothing to do with, I'm got, I gotta find out whether there's a better way. Um, I have been working around the clock, me and my team, um, in terms of making sure that what I'm about to give you here, what I'm about to train you on here, is going to meaningfully free you out of the trap that you're in right now, and hopefully set you up for an entirely different way of looking at getting ahead for the rest of your life. Um, the fear is real, guys, right? I mean, I mean, we know this. I wanted to, to pull this up here. Just a, a smattering of the incredibly positive, um, life-affirming, wonderful headlines that we all have to wake up to. Here's one. Um, April 23rd in Fortune. Real unemployment rate soars past 20%, and the U.S. has now lost 26.5 million jobs. Fantastic. Thank you, Fortune, for that. Get really cheerful way, right? Here's another one from Reuters, just a couple of days ago. Millions of Americans join unemployment line as coronavirus savages economy. Awesome, awesome, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's another one from USA Today, how to break into your retirement piggy bank in the coronavirus crisis. And it goes on and on. Thank you for that, USA Today, keeping us on our toes there and, and really motivating us because that's what we really want to be thinking of, not just keeping us and our loved ones and our families safe during this time, not just keeping ourselves safe during this time. But yeah, don't be afraid to like bust out all of the rewards that you've spent a lifetime accumulating um, for this crisis, right? Um, hell no. Hell no. And um, I want each and every one of you to just remember two things, okay? Seems obvious, but boy, does it bear mentioning. The first is this too shall pass. Just because this is something new does not mean that this is the end all and the be all. It's not the apocalypse, no matter how much the doomsday preppers out there would have you say. It's just something new. And we're all adjusting and we will adjust and we will get back into it. You know that, I know that. The only problem is, is that in that uncertainty, our minds are racing out of control. Every piece in your life that was not great, every doubt you had about your career, about where you were going that was not great, obviously it's magnified times 10. But is that the truth? Or is that our minds just reacting to the newness of the situation? So that's the first thing, this too will pass. 
we will get back into it. Life will move on and careers will continue to astronomically get ahead or astronomically sputter out. That much will not change. And the second thing is, and that's the crux of this whole class that we've got today, is that beyond this too shall pass, this is the single greatest opportunity you will ever have to radically rewrite the rules of where you are and where you can go next. Right here, when things are confident, and I, and, and I want you guys to think about every interview you've had that didn't go anywhere, every boss that had this unearned sense of um of uh superiority you know it's uh, that feeling of unearned confidence is everywhere when things are going well in general when the economy is booming you might have nothing to do with that but everywhere you look it's like oh yeah everything's optional right because everything's going great you know, ask anyone who, who, who operates in investments, right? The biggest demon they had between 2008 and now is the fact that any Tom, Dick and Harry can go out there and say, hey, yeah, why do I need to invest in this fund when the market gives me X amount? You know, they had to fight that unearned sense of confidence. Well, guess what, guys? All of that is gone because the very same doubt and fears that you have been wrestling with, I promise you, every company out there is wrestling with. Every company out there has been put through a brutal stress test. And just like you and just like me, the same things that we always feared but didn't really want to look at all the way during good times, now it's up there, it's right in front of our face. And the same thing is happening with every company out there. They are being put under stress. And that stress properly channeled will be the rocket fuel you need to change the game for you and your loved ones forever if you come with me here, okay? So here's what I want. I want zero distractions. I could not care less about your iPhone. Turn that crap off. Turn everything off except this and us right now because my goal is to free people. That's what I do. That's why I'm in this game. That's why I'm here to serve. We've done that for over 1,600 others just like you. And no matter how bad your situation feels right now, I promise you, we have seen worse. So I'm here to help you and my hand is out, but I need your complete and undivided attention as though your life and fortune directly depends on it because it does. So let's get into it guys. And let's make this a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful journey together. All right, so who is this for? This is for any professional who is feeling scared and uncertain about the future right now and wants to trans transition into a better opportunity as soon as possible. Whether you've been recently laid off or you fear it happening soon, we hear it all the time about these waves of furloughs that are happening. And definitely, guys, just to be clear, everything is not going to magically solve when they reopen the country. You all know that. There's going to be, in all likelihood, a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth wave of this stuff that's gonna happen. And, and, and so it's not going anywhere soon. So if you're, if you're feeling that fear, you're doing exactly the right thing which is right now asking yourself, how can I do things differently and how can I move this forward? Awesome, awesome. Whether you've been searching for a while, even before you know March when, when this thing hit and you, you're just disappointed because you're doing all the right things, you're putting those 20, 20 plus hours in there and you still can't seem to make headway, this is for you. Or whether you're just in a job right now and everyone's telling you, hey, be glad for what you have, right? You know, that scarcity mindset that passes for wisdom out there that is poison. Just be happy with what you have. Listen, listen, listen. Don't rock the, rock the boat, right? Be happy with what you have. But you know the truth. You know the truth that it didn't do it for you then. And now it seems like it's really not going to do it for you. And how much longer do you want to stick around? So if this situation is deteriorating because the, the, the person that you report to never understood you, or, you know, and this happens more often than you would believe, you started a job and you outpaced and outperformed all of their expectations, only instead of looking at that as the joy that it is and the gift that it is, people look at you as a threat. Your boss is looking at you as, as a threat. Or maybe you're just stuck in a culture that has been feeding from the trough of dysfunction for so long that you feel if you don't get out of there, that's gonna mess you up in a way that you cannot recover from. Wherever that is, this is for you. This is exactly for you, all right? And here's what I'm, I wanna show you. Here's what I wanna lead you through here, okay? Here's what I wanna give you. 
I want to show you how you can generate dream career opportunities. Not any, not whatever is going to do it. Because once you go into, into that form of thinking, you're just a victim, truly. I want to show you how you can generate the, the, the types of opportunities that make you feel a little bit nervous, you know? That makes my, uh, my, uh, my son Henry, you know, he's three, gives him that queasy feeling. I'm like, what's going on, dude? He's like, um, I'm like, okay, let's just go over to the bathroom just to be safe, you know? Whatever, whatever that is, you know, that I want you to feel the good version of that. I want you to feel the version of, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Like, I can't believe that, that during this crazy period, when there was so much fear out there, so much stockpiling and fear and anxiety, I was able to make a jump. Huge, huge, huge career changes are made during these periods. In fact, just a personal note, my career began in the midst of the last downturn that we had. I never would have thought about that. I never would have thought about helping people in the way that I do today if that adversity hadn't shown me this and forced me to look at the situation and say, yeah, 99% of the career advice out there is absolute garbage. You could, you, could, it, it, you, could, you could ignore it for the rest of your life and you would be just fine. So why aren't these people being helped and these people still need help? Um, 08, 09 did that for me. And I want 2020 to do that for you. I want, I want to show you how to remove what we call over here job seeker breath from the equation. And I want you to, show, I want you to go in and negotiate as an equal with senior level executives and key decision makers, even if, You've never done that for yourself ever before. That's okay. There is still a way that you can do that. And heck, you can have a blast doing it too. I'm gonna to show you the secret signals and behaviors which turn an outsider candidate with potential red flags into a one-of-a-kind expert who can command a premium asking price. Take it from someone who has been working with people in the C-suite and below for many, many years. If you look at the history of any CEO worth his or her salt, and you were able to take a chunk of their history and just look at it free of context, you would not say that this person is a CEO. You would say, what the heck is going on here? What's with these random twists and turns? Isn't this person a little old to be doing this? Or isn't this person a little young to be doing this? You know, Or what's with this weird gap that they've had here? Or how come this person let, let go of the safety and security of a Fortune 500 company to spend time at a failed startup, failed startup, failed startup? What's up with that? If you have a lot to offer, it's gonna be a harder puzzle piece for you to, to, to put together. It's gonna to take longer. And yes, more people are gonna judge you. But guess what? When those pieces come together, it is an incredible thing because that journey is absolutely singular. So I wanna challenge you and ask you right now, are the things that you consider red flags in your career, the grand excuses that we have, not for gaining the life that is ours and should by all rights be ours today, are these actually right red flags? Are these actually problems? Are these things that you should be ashamed of? Or are they simply the risks taken by a ballsy individual to carve out a life that has pride and integrity? What is it? If you don't feel ashamed of them, they're not really red flags. It's just a perception issue on the part of employers. And that's an important distinction to make. And I'm gonna show you how you can get past that, okay? And finally, how to systematize and scale your efforts so that three hours per week generates more hiring activity than 30 plus hours chasing roles on job boards and networking. Think weeks to an outcome, not months. That's what we see here, weeks to offers, okay? We don't buckle in for a five, seven, nine month thing. We don't buckle in to make this the new way. The only reason we've been fed that trash in terms of that's what we need to do to get a job is because what we've been taught is so low ROI that it requires that investment of time. If you're doing it the smart way, it doesn't. Here's an analogy. If the only thing we've been taught is how to ride a bike between destinations, then for sure, if I'm going to visit my in-laws, it's going to be a, a day-long bike, bike journey to get there, right? But if someone were to clue me in that, oh yeah, there are these things called automobiles that you can use that'll get you there in 10, 15 minutes, then you don't have to ever worry about investing the time of that bike, right? You don't ever have to do that. I wanna show you that path here today, okay? Most importantly, I wanna show you how you can bring real choice and freedom back into your career. The one thing that all of the powers that be really do not want you to have, which is the freedom and the authority to make your own play when you feel it's right on your terms and end this cycle of diminishing returns which holds back so many otherwise promising professionals from the happiness they deserve. You know, we all know that, don't we? 
and and I'm not judging this, but I'm just putting I'm putting the question out to you guys. We all know those people who seem successful on the outside. They they've got it all. They got the house, they got the cars, they probably got the bank account. But the thing is, the way that they got there was being more subservient than most. They didn't get there by pursuing a path that filled them up, that made them stronger, that made them an inspiring figure to their families. They got there by eating more crap, by taking more crap, by eroding away their freedoms over and over and over and over again and saying that my paycheck makes that worthwhile. I don't want you to win that way because I've seen what happens to people at the end of their journeys when they pursue that path. And trust me, you do not want to be that person. What happens is your identity fractures. And what happens is that your self-esteem and belief fractures over time. And what you end up with is a piece of a man or a woman, not the whole. Not the whole. I want to show you how to succeed the right way, a way that fills you up and strengthens you, whether it moves to an offer or not. Either way, you win. So here's my promise, a step-by-step -step strategy for generating dream career opportunities within the hidden job market, which accounts, by the way, for over 80% of all roles and over 90% of all executive roles without fluff, without BS, or without any sales hacks. That's not what we're in the, in the business of. What I need from you right now, aside from the lack of distractions, is I would have a piece of paper, uh, uh, a notepad, and a pen right next to you, okay? You can use an MS Word document. It's gonna be less effective. What I'm gonna lead you through here, the questions I'm gonna be asking you, yes, I'm gonna be challenging you because I definitely have no interest in you passively sitting there, taking in more information, and then going on with your day. If that happened, I have failed. So I need your, I need you to step up I need you to engage with every word of this. And I need you to do the things that I'm gonna lead you through here without exception, without fail, without hesitation. Cool? All right, let's go. How many of these fit into who you are? Do you keep pouring hours and hours into applying for jobs, networking, and following up without any offers to show for it? So many people are out there being like, look, I'm following up, I'm doing the calls, I'm applying for the jobs. Okay. Maybe that makes you sound better to your loved ones that, hey, I did what I was supposed to do. But guys, we gotta get real here. If you are, if what you're doing is not resulting in offers regularly and consistently, why do it? No one is out there, no one has ever worked with me, no one has ever been out there because they love the resume or they love a LinkedIn profile. No one cares about that. The only thing we want are offers, right? So what is the fastest possible path to an offer? And I want you thinking like this through this entire session. What is the fast path towards getting there? What is the fastest way that I can do it? Are you struggling with the voice inside that says, no one's gonna hire people during a pandemic anyway, so why bother? You find yourself getting irritated at having to prove yourself yet again to HR or a hiring gatekeeper who doesn't seem to know you, doesn't seem to care about you, and, and, and yet again, you gotta find some way, right, to impress them. Are financial stressors intensifying in the wake of this virus and forcing a level of scarcity-based decision-making about your career? Do you feel like the hardness of this current moment in time gives you an out to accept something that you know you've already outgrown? And if that's the case, how big of a solution can it be? Yeah, it might lend in an offer, but if six months from now you're back in the same place, and a year from now you're back in the same place and you gotta restart a job, guess what? Now you've lost a year and you've sent a signal in terms of your overall journey that this is your level because you accepted another role at that level, which is which is starting to, to, to seed the impression, okay, maybe you're a lifer at that, right? Not a real solution. Are you engaging in downwards negotiating, and this is so common, pursuing roles and compensation levels that you know are beneath you just to get some, any momentum going, right? Just to get that call on the books. Do you feel a sense of obligation to put on a brave face at home? And don't we all, right? But inside, the doubts and the fears continue to rise. It's hard, right? And we don't have a limitless amount of time here to do it. Whatever we gotta do, we gotta do it fast and we gotta do it expediently. Because, you know, as much as I like to say, oh, you know, what happens with me at work uh, and 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 where, how I am with my wife and my kids, never the twain shall meet. Come on. Come on, y'all. You know that's not the truth. You know that's not the truth. When, when I'm in a bad place, when I feel like a failure, when I feel like everything I do 
It's like life's laughing at me because it's not working. And why have I been relegated to doing this anyway? Because this is not my life. I know that if you're in job search mode, this is not what God puts you on earth to do. So why am I forced to being doing it? And why am I failing at this, right? That bleeds over into everything and it starts to poison things. So I wanna ask you how much of that has been going on right now in your recent history, right before you started this class? Um, are you worried that you've been out of the game too long and that this, the stigma of being chronically unemployed isn't too far off? At first it was one month, then it was three, then it was six maybe, then it was eight, or maybe it was never that. Maybe it was, this was gonna be a short three month stint as a consultant. I'm five years into a consultant thing and I can't get anyone out there to look at me as something other than that. So what, if, you, if, you're, if you're feeling like that, I want you to just connect with that and ask yourself, how much of that is occupying my thoughts right now? And do you know that there's a calling in your heart to do more, be more and succeed more, but every single step you take on this job search seems, seems to bring you further and further away. The real problem guys, and I wanna be very clear, the real answer to every one of those questions I've just asked you is that you have been taught to play the wrong game. And that particular game, let's call it job seeking, crumbles when you put it under pressure. Look, even under the best of times, no matter what your qualifications are, you, supply to, you uh, apply to a job posting, 75 to 80% of the time, you're, you're gonna get a form rejection in the email. No one saw it. It's just a little algorithm, boop, and it just shows up. That happens 75 to 80% of the time during good times. Now, think about what that's like. Lowball offers are very, very, very common when you go the traditional route. Whatever the range is, I want you to think about the lowest possible end of that range, and it's gonna fall somewhere there or, or near it most of the time. I want you to think about it now, okay? The game is crumbling and disintegrating right now because the game was crap to begin with. The game had nothing going for it, it was false. But now we're seeing it, right? So the, the path to winning is not to find the magical sauce. I know that there's tons of experts out there who are peddling this. Oh, mm, fetishize the resume, oh, that's it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, don't look at actually how you're doing it. Just, yeah, 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 no, no trust me, I'm the best resume writer in the world, all right, it, it, it's fixed. Oh, oh, um, I, I got the best networks in the world, all right? I'm gonna hook you up with the best recruiters. I could do that for you personally right now. But guess what? It's not a solution because it hasn't changed and you're playing the same game, right? To win, you've got to commit to playing the real game of getting ahead. The one that has been kept from us, the one that they do not want you to play because it puts you, even though you're an individual, on equal footing, with any form of power out there in hiring, including full companies, executives, you name it. They don't want you knowing this because they don't want you acting like that. They wanna keep you safe, plugged into the matrix. Those of you who've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. They would rather you be that battery in that pod. They do not want you free. They do not want, make you, uh, want you making your own moves, because obviously not. Because then with that equal, equal stance, guess what? I got to pay you. I got to show up. I got to treat you seriously. And I got to move on your time frame. They don't want any of that. That's why they've kept it from you. Luckily, it's been my obsession. And it's the thing that I focused my entire life on. Okay. And I've seen the shift happen. But right now, I want you to say to yourself, am I ready to leave the old game behind and play this new one? Am I ready to leave behind all of those negative ramifications and step into something new? And even though I'm scared, can I trust Anish enough here in this moment? Can I trust what he is saying and the reality of what he's saying here to say, yeah, let me step, let me try, let me see. That's what I want from you right now. And if you don't feel that way, no judgment, but you're really not going to like the other points I'm going to make here, okay, and the other and the and and how far we're going to go with this. Once you do, though, once you do make that that brave, brave, courageous step, here's what you have to look forward to: complete control over which roles you take on, when, and how much you're going to charge. Forget about the range. Forget about the range. You will not. You will be able to create new opportunities for yourself which did not exist before. You will be able to move ahead on your terms. You will never again lose precious months and years in the wilderness of the job hunt. Market downturns and recessions will mean nothing to you personally, even though it's causing damage on the outside. 
And that's a huge difference, guys. The macro, the big trends are the big trends. That's what's happening. 26.5 million um, unemployed people, that's, that's, that's the reality of what's going on there. But in the realm of individuals, there are sparks shooting out right, left, and center. I will tell you personally that in our shop, offers have not stopped one iota since this coronavirus started. It has not stopped. The flow has continued. And we have clients not just in the US, we have them in Europe. I, um, we have clients in Italy. Offers continue to roll in. It's not about the external situation. It's how an individual carries him or herself that makes all the difference. You will primarily be dialoguing with people who have clout, senior leaders and decision makers at companies, not low level gatekeepers. And that must happen. That must happen because the gatekeepers are predisposed towards not seeing you the way that you really are. They are usually so risk averse because all they need to do, it's like in my days as an actor in my 20s, casting agents, God, I hated them. They, they, they fancied themselves creative visionaries. They were peons, that's all they are. All they are is who are the safest actors and actresses that I can bring up to the director to show how well I followed their orders. Well, I'm sorry, but HR and gatekeepers are largely following that same paradigm. So anything that makes you unique, anything that gives you an edge, anything that gives you a perspective is looked at as a risk. And what they're asking themselves is, ooh, yeah, nice, nice, nice fella there. You know, that was a nice person, a good conversation would obviously be a great fit. But, you know, I don't know if I want to, like, expend the capital making a stand for this person. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, OK, come on. That's not that's not going to help you at the high levels. The people who have real skin in the game, everything that makes you an outsider makes you an insider or at least gives you potential value. Because at that level, what they're looking for is who can illuminate the areas that I have not illuminated and who can solve the problems that I have yet to anticipate that are driving us nuts. So when we look at someone with a unique journey from that lens, it's a totally different thing. Ah, I might be able to learn something here. Ooh, I might be able to get to, 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 to solve this problem expediently in this way, or, or I never looked at what we were doing in IT or business development or anything in that lens. Wow, that's incredible. You know, it, it's, it's a total shift. And you've got to get there. You've got to get there if you are serious about your career and you're serious about really having an impact. Finally, it's about bringing that life of abundance and choice back into you for you and your loved ones. All of today's limitations fall away and your only limits are that of your ambition and your imagination. And that's what I want for each and every one of you. I want, when you look at the road ahead, I want you to feel like, oh my gosh, like, whew, I need more dreams. I need bigger dreams. I need bigger quality dreams. You know, that's that that's that's the life that I find myself living here miraculously. I was a struggling um, kid, uh, dropout from theater school. What what the hell did I have? I had no career prospects. You know, um, I turned myself into a journalist. I learned it the old school way, on the streets, figuring out how to write, figuring out how to interview. I built a career for myself. But guess what? Every time I tried to to get hired the traditional way, I was looked at as a college dropout with nothing. Oh, I'd only succeeded in the most important way, but that didn't matter. And then I started building and then I started building and I realized that no matter how much I achieved, it wouldn't matter as long as I played this game. Because this game is ignoring everything that makes me sacred, makes me beautiful. And it's ignoring everything that's making you sacred and beautiful too, in favor of a job posting, a dry, boring, I'll say it, moronic way to hire and, and vet individual souls a bunch of, of stuff that, that most people, quite frankly, here's a dirty secret, most job postings, they don't even care enough to create it from scratch. What most people will do is, oh, I got to hire for an IT director? Fantastic. Let me spend 10 minutes on LinkedIn, Indeed. Let me, let me uh, copy and paste, uh, plagiarize a bunch of different uh, job postings. Voila, job is done. Let's go get a beer, okay? Um, that's what a job posting is. That's how it starts from, okay? And that's why we've got to get out of it. Um, Mara did a great job of introducing me, so I'm not going to reiterate that, but I will tell you that I'm amongst the top 1% of career experts on, on, on LinkedIn. I'm the creator of the linked hire job search system, which we'll go into a little bit today. That's an end to end way of executing the relationship building piece, getting the calls on the books with the right people in a systematic way that involves none of this job search crap that we're talking about. Um, my posts and videos on disrupting the normal rules of job searching, reaching a combined audience of millions per month. and most importantly, I know what it's like 
to feel like you have so much to offer and you're ready to start and you're ready to go and you have gone in the past and you just can't get the permission. You just can't get it to, to tip over. I know how much that feels. And I know what the opposite feels like. And I know that if you're here with me, then you have the capacity to come with me here and enter this different land, enter this different way, because it is so much better on this side. And for each of you right now, um, I encourage you, pull up LinkedIn, send me a connection request, okay? If you put in, the, if you put in my first word, that, that's the great thing about having an Indian name, you know, Anish. Put in A-N-I-S-H in the search bar. I will probably most likely be the first person that you see. Shoot me a connection request, okay? Connect with me. Uh, let me know that you're watching the, uh, the webinar right now. I would love to connect with you. And I do share daily career tips and advice. And, and I'd be happy to keep you plugged in um, right from the headquarters of those who are free, all right? Um, most importantly, like all of you, um, I'm doing it for a reason beyond myself. These are the three individuals that I'm doing it for, along with my wife, Erin. Uh, my oldest son is Mickey. He's the open-hearted one. Uh, he's getting way too good at Taekwondo. I'm actually, between you and me guys, I'm actually starting to get a little worried because you know we'll be wrestling and tussling and stuff, and he's been getting so strong with his kicks and his punches and things like that that I'm starting to get a little a little freaked about that. Um, Henry is our middle child. He's the kind of over-deliberator one, a little bit of the worrier one, but got the sweetest, most circly face you could ever see. And then we've got Teddy, who's just, ooh, he's a handful and not sleeping worth a darn, okay? So he's making it interesting. Let's use the euphemism interesting right now uh, in terms of the sleep side uh, for, for me and my wife. All right, so I wanna, I wanna lead you through exactly what the five signals are, okay? These are the five that you need to send in order to start generating your own career opportunities quickly. All right, you need to link these up. You need to identify, activate, and link them up together. And if you do that, this is going to be a never ending stream, not a one off. Okay, and I'm going to walk you through every single one of these five right here on this session. The first one is arguably the most important, and that is simply this amplify your why. And I want you to write this down right now amplify your why. What do I mean by that? If the goal that you have here is just to find another job, just to get employed somehow, just to, you know what, I'm a VP, time to be an SVP, I'm long overdue, it's not going to work. So I really want to ask you, why are you really doing this? Why are you here? And don't tell me because you have time to kill and because, you know what, it, it was nice, you know, I wanted to get some advice and all of that. If that's there, quite frankly, you probably aren't going to benefit from the rest of it. Why are you really here? Why does it matter? Is it just to survive? Is it to take more crap from another boss who just doesn't get it and doesn't care to? Why then? They have taught us to play small and they have rewarded us for being good students our whole lives. And why do they do that? Why does it feel safer to say, I just need a job? Why does it feel safer not to risk saying, I have a dream, I have a purpose, and I need to fulfill that. Does it feel better if we fail to say that, oh, I just didn't get a job? Is playing small the reward that we have there? Is it that we, we're not gonna be as hurt or we don't want to actually have that moment where we discover, oh God, I'm, I, I actually can't do it. I really want you to get honest with yourself right now and ask you, ask yourself, if you're thinking of it in terms of, the, of that, just another job, why? And can you amplify that? Because a man or a woman who is divorced from their purpose is the perfect victim. They are easy to manipulate and even easier to throw away. Someone who is a job seeker, someone who just wants something little like that, the minute you, you encounter any kind of resistance, someone challenges you, Someone says, hell no, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's not going to happen. The minute you get resistance, you're going to fold like a cheap suit. The stronger your why is, the more you're going to be able to fight for this and the bolder you're going to be able to get. So I want you to amplify and magnify that, okay? Because you will not win this game by playing small. It will not work, especially in this environment. So here's the first question, okay? Grab your notepad, grab your pen right now. Here's what I want you to answer. Free of, I don't want you to think of job postings or titles at all. Here's what I want. 
what is a career outcome that would absolutely thrill you right now and make you feel like you are walking further into God's purpose for your life? And look, it doesn't have to be a God thing. Whatever your whatever that sense is for you, I want you to write out five aspects, okay? Five things that you want to see that is going to make this a dream opportunity for you. And you are not allowed to use the job posting. You are not allowed to use anything I could find in 10 seconds through through uh, a search on the internet. I want to I want you to write down five things that will make every day at work for you a pleasure, a joy. It will make every day that you spend engaged in something that's truly meaningful, and it would make you feel like you are taking ownership of your life like you never have before. Maybe for those of you who are walking out of a toxic situation, one of your five is being around a band of people who know, like, and trust you no matter what, that give you a sense of loyalty there. If you know that you've been underpaid brutally, maybe yours is that you feel abundant in, sense of, in, in the sense of rewards, that you feel taken care of so that you can enter into this work and the 70, 80, whatever hours that you spend on a big project or a big thing, you don't ever feel like more is being taken away from you than is coming back right? What are those five concrete aspects that are going to do it and constitute a dream opportunity for you right now? I want you to write those down. Here's the follow-up to that, for, that first question. Who are you doing this for, apart from yourself? Who else is going to benefit when you are in a situation that has all of that five and more? Is it going to be your wife, your husband? Is it going to be your parents? Is it going to be your cousins, your loved ones, your extended family? Is it going to be people that you are helping who aren't family members? Who are you doing this for? Because I want you to serve something beyond ego. Because ego has limitations. And as long as it's about me, 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 I'm never going to be able to actually achieve something brilliant. When I make it about you, when I think about where you are, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, magic is unlocked. So I want you to write down, who are you doing this for? And here's the third question. What are five ways that these people that you are doing this for, or person, gets immeasurably better by your making this dream outcome a reality? Okay? How are those ways? If, if you're doing it for your kids, what are five ways their life gets better? Does your relationship with them improve because they see a father who is in purpose and it has a degree of happiness and purpose even when things are hard? Um, is it going to be um, knowing that they're never going to have to struggle to pay for college or um, take those steps the way that you did? You know, I had to deal with that. I remember, you know, um, um, my parents, you know, were struggling for many years. I knew I never had that option. And when I did, I felt such shame, you know, when I was just starting out, um, you know, it felt like I was getting a handout. It wasn't a handout because I was trying the best that I could. But my God, did I feel so awful about that you know and one of the dreams for me especially with kids is look you're not gonna have to worry about that stuff okay you know you're, you're gonna be covered you're gonna be abundant in a way that i never was and that's as much for them as it is for me i guess you know but i want you to ask yourself what are those ways that their life gets better see this is what a real why is about guys this is this is about being having the courage to really ask yourself the hard questions and live with the hard questions that's what, that's what separates the top tier individuals in any line of work, in any profession, from all the rest. That 1% from the 99%, if you want to put it that way. It's that they bring everything to the table and they fight for something bigger than themselves. Okay? So I want you to write down these five ways right now. All right? And here's the moment of truth that these questions have been building towards. And here's where it gets real, I guess. Are you willing to let these people down that you are in service to because you're afraid to try something new or because your ego's taken a hit? Are you willing to let those you love live a lesser than life because you did not care enough to be their champion? Or will you do whatever it takes, however much it takes in order to be their hero? That's the stark choice I'm putting in front of you. If you're in, you're in. If you're committed to doing it, you're in all the way. And every time you take that next step, I want you to remember your answers to these three questions here. Who are you doing this for? How are all the ways their life gets better? Why? 
is it absolutely critically necessary for you to do that? And when you feel weak, when you feel tired, when you feel less, less than perfect, I want you to ask yourself, I am doing this for them and I am executing this as an advocate for them so that they will be better. So I am serving them. Or you could stick doing exactly what you're, what you're doing. That's your choice, right? But if you wanna do this, this is the way. This is the fount that we start from, all right? Here's, the, here's uh, step number two, signal number two. I want you to own your lane of authority. If the word job seeker attaches itself to you in any way, shape, or form, you are gonna lose in this market. And um, I wanna give you some numbers here to immediately just paint this for you, okay? The average job search in America takes just over five months. That's the average when things were going well. Right now in this environment, I want you to prepare to double it as a minimum, okay? So I want you to budget somewhere in the, in the vicinity of 10 months if you're going at this the traditional way. For executives, I want you to triple it because it takes executives longer going the traditional route because guess what? Companies like to really dangle the carrot infinitely around. Here you go, here's a carrot, here's a carrot, go ahead. Um, interview number three, go ahead. Interview number five, interview number six, interview number seven, go ahead. Um, actually, you know what? Um, what we'd really love, we're right there. We, we're right on the cusp of an offer. What we really want though um, is, um, uh, we want you to uh, um, just put together a presentation for us, okay? It'll take a couple hours of your time, just send it over to us, okay? Um, it's not going to work that way. And employer ghosting has spiked dramatically, all right? As has retracted late stage offers. That means that people have been saying they, they're giving you offers, they're giving you offers, they're giving you offers. It's not happening, right? Below range offers are on the rise. And yet, the need for experts who can solve the big problems has never been as intense. That's the weird dichotomy there. Every company out there is being stressed right now, but the question is, which side of this are you gonna fall on, right? Which of these are, are gonna work for you? Um, I recently worked with a woman named Ellen, and um, when we started speaking, her level of frustration was very high because she, um, in her mind, she's like, look, I don't get it. I'm an expert at defining policies. I'm an expert at um, bringing that clarity there. Why can't I make this work? And we're speaking, and it was, I believe, our second, maybe third session together, where she started telling me, because um, I noticed that there was a, a, a kind of like neutrality in her expression, you know? And it took a little while before she trusted me enough to let me know that, oh, and by the way, um, 12 years ago, I had a brain surgery. They found a tumor in my brain. Six weeks after that, I was in surgery. And um, right after that, I lost 80% of my ability to speak. My brain was working fine. I could read and understand fine, but my speech was deeply affected. She had to relearn how to speak. And she had, by the time we started working together, gotten that up to about 80%. And everything she was looking at ahead was why won't this job work? So going back to this point, the, the, the previous point, and then playing into this one, my question for you is this, was what she wanted a job? Is that what her why was? Or was her why, I am going to wear this adversity like a badge of honor. And this time, when I make this a reality, I'm gonna bring everything and I'm not gonna feel shameful for the aphasia that came from it. I'm, gonna, I'm going to look at that and say, look at, look at the commitment necessary. So is it a job that she needed or was it uh, an outcome that would help her own this life and convert the shame she had been feeling unfairly for 12 years into joy and into something that she could be proud of? Which is it? Because if it's a job, she would have failed. But when she reconnected with the truth of what she was doing, she was absolutely unstoppable and no amount of, of, of resistance would ever stop her, ever. Because this is her life. And the same thing is true here about your lane of authority. You might be asking yourself, Anish, I'm not an expert. That's not who I am. That's not who you know what I'm about. I get it. So remove the word authority or expert from your mind. Ask yourself this, what are 10 ways 
that you can make any company or client better. Okay? How can you help us grow, strengthen, diversify? And I want you to think as though you're speaking to me and I'm the CEO of a company. Okay? So I want you to think not through the lens of your experience or what 99% of people put out there in their brands, which is I've got X number of experience, I've got skill set, blah, 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 blah. No, no. I'm asking you to think like I'm thinking. I don't care about your background and your skill set. I really don't. I don't care about what school you graduated from or whether you have an MBA. I really don't. I'm looking to make sure that we grow, that we move forward, that our people are galvanized around a mission, and that we live our purpose to that highest level, and that we are so protected right now. Because boy, oh boy, do we have problems going on. I want you to think through the lens of affecting me and then write down what are 10 ways that you can make the situation better right now and, and really stretch yourself, okay? If, if you're not a, if you're not a, you know, if, if, if your skill set is not around team management and people management, but you know that you have left every single group of individuals higher and ascendant through your influence, I want you to write that down. If you know that you are excellent at helping people find a different way to activate data so that the fundamentals of their business are going to be stronger. As we move forward, no matter what, I want you to write that down. But I don't want you to put any silos in your mind right now, okay? And I definitely do not want you to put in corporate jargon or boring resume bullet points, you know? That's like the senator who's been in there a little bit too long because every word they say is this is this um, um, rolling stream of obfuscation, meaning absolutely nothing. I want you to get real here, okay? Because if it's not real to you, it's not going to be perceived as real out there. All right, and I want you to write that down. Now, what are some ways in which you can do this? So these 10 that you've written down, right, that you're working on, in, in this question, I wanna ask yourself, what are the ways that you can do that? What are the ways that only you can do that? I want you to think about your magic here, the way in which you can do it that no one else can, the way in which you can, pe you can put the puzzle pieces together. You know, I was working with um, an IT executive uh, named uh, Tad, um, and he um, was absolutely focused on the fact that the reason he couldn't break out, he had the experience, he had all of that in spades. In fact, he almost had too much. And he could not understand, why, why can't I make that move? Why is, are the doors not opening? Or when they are, why is it like formulaic? It's not real. Why is this not happening? And, you know, and I know I'm, I, I, I'm strong in, in software as a service. I know I'm strong in this. I know all of that, you know, and, and what do I do in this? Do I uh, rejigger everything so that I fit this? Do I rejigger this to fit that? And we're just talking and we're exploring what, he, what he's doing. And a single phrase came out and it said this, Anish, when I'm um, in that room and, you know, CEO, other people here, and we're looking at the road ahead, I don't know how else to explain it except Two plus two equals five when you're with me um, because everyone has their take on what's going on there. But the way that I can look at it, obviously specifically in the tech side, is I can see answers and value that would not appear to them. And I was like, say that again. Two plus two equals five. Tad, that is the heart of your true power as an authority not your, your tech skill set, impressive though it may be. The tech skill set is his major arm. That's the thing that he uses to make the change happen. But really, the value of him is this mind and this perspective, this ability to be in that room, look at that situation, and find that extra one, right? That two plus two in, into five, he finds that, he sees that. What is the worth of that? because that's a hell of a lot more valuable than just another IT executive. That is a business partner that you can trust, and that is someone that you know is gonna have your back even when we don't know what the answers are. I know that I've got a magic man here in terms of what he sees. And so that shifted our, his whole way of looking at himself. It shifted the whole brand he was putting out. It shifted the, the, the tenor of the conversations he was having. Because he was thinking like, I'm a, I'm a business partner to these leaders and I make this work across these, these areas. He's owning everything in a higher way. 
So I really want you to consider your magic. And here's the moment of truth for this, okay? Whatever your name is, first and last, my last my name is Majumdar, a lot more complicated than Anish, I know. I want you to name your process, okay? All of these pieces of magic that you've discovered in the last one, put a name to it. And it can be the 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 Sarah title process, it can be the Mara Far uh, uh, process, whatever it is, whatever it is, I want you to name it right now, okay? And here's what I want you to hear. And I know we've just scratched the surface here, right? But it's the seed of this shift. The sum total of your impact combined with the uniqueness of your approach is the beating heart of your power as an authority for what you do as only you can do it. You don't have to be a leader like me. You don't have to be a leader like Tony Robbins. You don't have to be a leader like this person or that person. But you can be a leader for yourself as only you can do it if you commit to occupying the highest possible frame for yourself. And this is what should be the crux of your entire brand. Not leading off with experience, but, but going right into the major, major problem that you solve and the unique way that only you can do it. That should be 99.99999% of the emphasis of everything that you put out there, including your face-to-face -face strategy or Zoom-to-Zoom -Zoom strategy, such as the case may be, all right? And can you see the potential? That's my point here for this section, okay? Can you see how, by thinking about this in a different way and being a little ballsy, you can totally transform the way in which you're perceived? And by extension, you can radically speed up your time to offer. So at this point, we know two things, right? We know that we've gotta be amplifying our why. We know that we cannot play small. And we know that we should be operating as an authority, not a job seeker. Both of these signals are essential to landing your dream job during difficult times because they're gonna make you fight harder, right? The deeper your why, the stronger the fighter. They're gonna make you fight for bigger stakes. An authority plays a bigger game for everything, including material rewards. And it's gonna create a, a perception of scarcity and certainty in the eyes of others. And let me just repeat that, certainty in the eyes of others. That is the most important thing that you can give to anyone right now when you are having discussions involving a new opportunity. Because there is fear there, and right now the thought is, I need to make sure that the fundamentals of what we do are, are sound. I, I need to make sure that the moves that we are making are the right ones. When you move down and you say, I am an authority, or your signals say, I am an authority in this, and I have 100% confidence that this is the path forward that is gonna solve it in a way that nothing you guys have done in X, Y, Z, A, B, C are gonna do, you are giving people something so precious. You're giving them the thing they want most of all right now. Now, let's take a look at the secret weapon that is gonna help you leverage your time and scale this approach. All right, so let me make a bold statement. Those of you who've taken classes with me before know that I'm not really a stranger to that. So I guess it'll be par for the course. Face-to-face uh, -face networking is not something you need to worry about um, having lost on because of this situation, because it was largely a waste of time anyway. As a coach of mine once told me, Anish, if you are not having conversations that end in a yes or a no, do you know what you are? What, Mark? unemployed. If you are having generalized networking, emails, calls, I want you to stop. If you're having getting to know you, hey, fantastic, how's it going? I'm going to pretend I'm not a job seeker. Just stop. 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 If there is not an outcome attached, it will not work, and it will certainly not work in this environment. But at the same token, as we've been talking about, you can't do that as a job seeker. Because the minute you say, I'm a job seeker, I'm looking for new career opportunities, just looking to see what's out there. Come on, people aren't stupid. We know what that means. Oh, okay, so I gotta suffer through a 15 minute call where you're gonna pump me and I don't have a job for you. I'm really sorry, right? That's the way that it's gonna end. But if you use LinkedIn as a path, and most importantly, because the, the fact that it's LinkedIn is really secondary, LinkedIn, we use that as the, as the major channel because 
Um, right now, it's the go-to. It's the go-to. I mean, it's trusted by most executives. 92% of employers, 93% of recruiters um, use it as a main channel. It's the place to be. So, so we're using that. But understand that the thing that makes it work has nothing to do with, with it being LinkedIn. It has everything to do with the fact that if you use that as the channel, you're going to give yourself a much more powerful advantage than anything you can do face-to-face. But what do you mean, Anish? What, what does that mean? I, you don't know how good I am face-to-face. I'm sure you're probably awesome face-to-face. You know, I'm, I'm great face-to-face. A- incredible. But here's the problem. The problem is when it's face-to-face, it's just you. You're the only one who's vouching for yourself. And if before you were to jump on that call, before you were to take that meeting, whatever that was, if you had laid the groundwork on LinkedIn, you would have had about 80 to 90% of the dominoes initially that you would have had to somehow pitch and present your way to done and out of the way. Let me give you some examples, okay? Let's say I um, connect with you. I have a real reason for that. And you know, we're going into the system, so I'm gonna keep this broad strokes, but um, I want you to just picture this, okay? So I connect with you. I've got a real reason for connecting with you that is as valid as if we were building that relationship on a face-to-face. I um, ask you to um, uh, uh, set up a call with integrity. You look at my LinkedIn profile. You are able to look at it and say, number one, okay, this is not a job seeker. This is someone who has momentum going all on their own, right? They've got a unique perspective, unique value, and the perception is this is happening no matter what. This is happening no matter what, right? No one wants to go to a store and have the whole people be like this, right? Please buy something. You, it, It's much more appealing if it's actually hard to get into that store. It's hard to buy. It's expensive to buy and you feel like it's really special when you get something, right? Same principle is here. I'm looking at LinkedIn, or, or this person's looking at LinkedIn, they're looking at it and they're looking at recommendations, they're looking at a very unique point of view that establishes me as an authority, they're looking at um, endorsements, they're looking at engagement, and every single one of those pieces is sending a signal that says, whoa, wow, huh, okay, credibility, authority, urgency in terms of this and scarcity because i don't i've never seen someone who works in this field who 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 is that okay sure i'll jump on the phone so before you've jumped on the phone with this person there's an awareness that a you're an expert b you're in demand and c the entire world is backing up my assertions before i've said word one right if if the 1600 other people that we've worked with through our business could all be in front of you and say everything about their experiences, their journey, their fear, their dreams, and their ultimate successes, each and every one of them, I really wouldn't need to say anything to you, would I? Right? I could just boop, right? Come on in, come on in. That's what using LinkedIn appropriately does. That's why you need to be on there and you need to be thinking about this. The the answer to most opportunities that come through the hidden job market will not come from your immediate network. Yes, you've got to get smart about tapping them the right way, playing all of these signals, lining that up. But in all likelihood, and the stats back that up 100%, in all likelihood, it's going to come from one level out. What in LinkedIn terms are known as your second degree connections, that's where it is. So the whole art of all of this, the reason we're setting up these signals is to put you into a place where you can activate this second degree effortlessly and have that stream coming effortlessly and getting better and better and stronger and stronger at finding out what's really going on, which we'll talk about in a second. But LinkedIn is the key, guys. LinkedIn is the key here. And here's the difference between the old way and the new way, just laid out there, okay? Here's the old way. Spend hours tweaking your resume and LinkedIn profile. Spend hours applying to jobs, networking, cold calling recruiters, and blasting out LinkedIn posts. Get treated like a disposable commodity during interviews. Am I wrong about that? If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but I really don't think I am because we've all, we're all human beings and we've all felt it. Step four, take whatever job you can get whenever it comes at whatever salary they tell you to take. And if it doesn't, go back to step one and do it all over again. That's why this thing sucks so badly, you know, because every step, disempowers you every step fosters doubt and every step wastes time that we do not have 
FYI, guys, one out of three of us are going to be taken out by some kind of external life event before we're planning on, before whatever our end date is. So if you're thinking 30 years, maybe it'll be 10. If I'm thinking 30 years, maybe it'll be five, maybe it'll be seven. I don't know. But I do know this. I need to make sure that the time I have counts. And I need to make really sure that talking about averages, that the four plus years the average professional spends over the course of their working life trying to find a job is eliminated. And I really want you to ask yourself what your life would look like if you had four more years to spend loving your children. If you had four more years to spend loving your family, making that stronger, having adventures, traveling, whatever you want to do. Traveling. Oh, remember that, guys? Remember traveling? It'll be back before you know it. What will getting those four years back mean to you? And along the way, this would be the path that would do it. Use the LinkedIn fast track method. Figure out what's the standing, the authority standing that I can use in my profile. What's a sequence of messages? What's a campaign, as we call it, that I can roll out for the right people at the companies that are going to be the most re receptive to me as the authority figure solving the unique pain that I do? Watch a flood of new opportunities come in and seamlessly transition to your lucrative dream job and ascend to a higher level in your career. Yes, it's very different. Yes, it takes some balls, of course. But... As uh, Darren, who recently went through the program, what he told me, he this is a great, a great story for, for every one of you. This is a guy who I first spoke to three years ago. And at that time, he was working uh, in a, you know, he's, he's an investments, investment strategy. He was already doing the equivalent of basically two jobs at that time. And the company was slowly going downhill. It was a company that did not adapt with the times. So they had all of these assets under management and they had no plan what to do with it. They could not adapt to the ball where it lies today, not where we would like it to be, right? That's what this is all about. And so when I spoke to him then, he knew that, that he was in a rough situation, but the doubts got the better of him. I didn't hear from him. He came up this year and now he's doing the equivalent of three jobs. And now he's sick and tired enough to know like, okay, with 40% of our assets gone, with this lowering, I still was able to keep my team and everyone intact. I know that it's time for me right now, please, to get something better. And he implemented this. He had never used LinkedIn before in his life. He was really, really worried about that. I showed him how if you use these signals the right way, you link it up in the right way, it takes away any fear you have of being treated like a disposable commodity. It takes away any aggression that people might have because you're building the relationship exactly the same as you would if you were doing it through a series of face-to-faces. You're just doing it incredibly much more efficiently. In a, in a span of, of one, two, three weeks, you're doing the equivalent of what might have taken you two to three months to slowly move someone towards. That's the only difference. And the joy for him is that the offer that he ended up taking the he had a dream number you know and the guy was doing three jobs so he knew like okay if i doubled it let's say he doubled it from 400 to 800,000 oh my god that would be incredible you know that's my dream i don't know if that's going to happen just getting that nice outcome would be great well the offer came in and it was his dream number and he didn't have to put one word of what his range was that was just how he was perceived and in that moment even though he had stepped up like a champion, he'd stepped up to finally solve this problem. That was the moment that psychologically it shifted for him. Because when he saw those numbers right there, and he realized that he had done that himself without anyone's permission, without asking any recruiter, without, without begging basically on the phone for when you're gonna make an offer, just having a conversation with the right person, having some courage and showing, I'm gonna show you one thing that is also one of the, the last signals here that'll really clarify this in terms of how you handle that conversation. But he did it himself. He did it with integrity. He had fun because they were talking about what really matters, which is what he does and talking about, okay, what's going on in this business? And then he knew if I could do that once, I could do it a hundred times. And if I could do this once, this is now my life. This is now my new baseline. And I want you to imagine whatever that incredible number is for you, whatever that incredible outcome is that you listed earlier, right? That makes it a dream outcome for you. How awesome is it going to feel for you to have that? 
How amazing is it going to feel to have the lights turn on in our world again, to have that pent up demand that we all have to live, to live outside of our apartments and our homes, but to actually live flesh and blood lives again with everything that that entails. Even if we got to wear a mask for a little while, who cares, right? How awesome is it going to feel for you to have every one of those five things right now, right now, and to know that you did it yourself. No one will ever be able to take this victory away from you. That's what we're talking about here. Here's uh, the the fourth shift here, okay? Diagnose the illness. And I'll, and I'll do it quick because I know we're, we're going through a lot of material here. Here's the thing, guys. Experts do not network. Experts don't waste an hour of their precious time answering questions related to their years of experience at company X, Y, and Z. Experts certainly do not slide over a copy of their resume and passively wait for someone else to take charge. Let me tell you what an expert does. An expert asks the questions needed for three things. Number one, I need to get clarity on the real problem that is here. Every business leader has, just like a patient seeing a doctor, their excuse, doc, million to one shot, million to one shot, you're not gonna believe what happened, I just need some ibuprofen, right? They all have their surface. Our job is in every call, in every meeting, to ask the questions that are gonna probe and go beneath that surface story to see what is really going on. That's objective number one. Objective number two is, I need to get the other person emotionally connected, yes, emotionally connected to the consequences of the problem, okay? As a coach of mine, Mark Von Muser, love you, man, once told me, an undisturbed buyer will not buy, and I'm gonna say the same thing to you, an undisturbed employer will not extend an offer. And the way you disturb an employer in the right way is you get them to see the truth of the situation as only you can, and you make it absolutely unbearable for them to live another day with that as the status quo. So that's objective two. And finally, finally, when you have that leverage comes objective three, which is we are going to move urgently on your time frame, because you're the expert, not me, towards a complete solution. These are the objectives you should have in every single call, every single interview. It is not to prove what a great candidate you are. It is not to say the right things. It is to get clarity on these three things, all right? And here's how that what will help you support it, and it'll help you see it in terms of your situation. I want you right now to go back to question four and write out 10 negative ramifications negative ramification questions based on that, that you can ask that point to problems in these areas. Here's a here's an example, okay? If I listed in question number four, that one of the, the things that I do is I reinvigorate sales team cultures and take performance to a new place, a negative ramification question might be something as simple as, hey, can you tell me, um, how, are, how are the sales teams doing right now in the wake of this COVID-19 situation? Um, how have you guys been adapting? Have you guys been resetting your targets in terms of, of the way forward? There must have been a huge hit. What's the plan for you guys making up for, for time frame? Or is there just a sense of resignation there that it's not going to work? A simple question like that, combined with an expert who has the willingness to probe, will get you all the way to the finish line and start the process of revealing what is really going on. And as you're probing in that way, as you're building it and leading people in that way, you are getting the leverage that you need and they are getting emotionally connected to it. Because again, using that doctor analogy, right? If you're a patient, whatever you thought, you just need some ibuprofen. I lead you through a, a, um, a, an assessment, right? I'm asking questions like this. I'm probing, I'm probing, I'm making notes. I'm figuring out what the, what the reality of the situation is, right? I'm the one who's asking most of the questions, by the way, not them, obviously, because you're the expert, right? right? I'm asking these questions, I'm figuring this out. What's happening is I'm getting the clarity, they're getting emotionally connected, and when the time comes for me to position myself as the solution, it's not a pitch. It's not a presentation that I'm making. A presentation or a pitch can be discounted. Yeah, well, I disagree. But if my solution is directly based on what you've told me, the reality of the situation, you just as the expert have put it together and locked it together into a way that I can see, and then you say you are the solution to that, 
And furthermore, here are the reasons why this needs to get started now, not post COVID-19. You're gonna be way, 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 way beyond the eight ball there, okay? And every one of you, no matter what your niche is, you've got rationales and reasons for why you can start now. So you should be thinking about that right now because you know that that's a defense. If you have that, you have all the leverage that you need because if there is any resistance about that, whoa, 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 listen, you know, we're all trying to do the best that we can here with this situation, blah, 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 blah. All you have to do is look at what you have uncovered, the worst aspects of that, and you need to get real with them and say, okay, so you tell me how long you want to deal with this. You've told me this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. Have you noticed these negatives yet? Have you Do, do you realize that if that's not going to happen six months from now, this is what the situation is going to be like. Nine months from now, this is what the situation is going to be like. 12 months, you don't have that function anymore. But please continue doing it your way if you feel like it's better. That is what leverage is all about. And that is what the leverage of an expert can only bring to the table. It's nothing short of magical. Um, and so here's the pledge I want to I wanna invite every single one of you to make right now, okay? It's a pledge in three parts. The first part is this. And I want you to write these down if you are serious about this. If you are not one of the people who are all talk, but your action, I want you to write these words down on a piece of paper right now, just to show me how serious you really are. Number one, I pledge to not go into contraction mode and give into the panic and fear mongering that is out there. The only way I lose is to follow instead of leading in this moment. I pledge to use this period to ascend to the highest vision of myself and accept the abundance that is my birthright. I pledge to give those I love and serve a dream life filled with opportunity. I will be an example of what's possible when a good person acts boldly and wins. Our mission here has always been, can we change 10,000 lives, 10,000 people who have the capacity to generate light, who are bringing the right thing to this world? Can we make that happen? We're up to 1,600. And we want those who are willing to add to those ranks to get it to that 10,000. Because we believe that when we look around this world and we don't see 10,000 um, jerks or type A personalities or people who are destructive and toxic, but we see 10,000 good heart-driven people like you, like me, like my wife, like my brother-in-law, like my sister-in-law, when I see them succeed, that's the example that our children, our communities need today. They need to see good people, the right people, succeeding astronomically. They need to know that that is possible. They need to know that there is a way to win this game that doesn't involve cheating or cheating others or making others feel like a victim. They need to know that. And so if that's your dream, I hope you've written every single one of these words down and I hope you make a commitment today to live by that and not back down on your word. Don't go back. Here's the final signal invest in expert help. Um, and I know there's a whole bunch of you, listen, 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 times are da, ba, 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 times are short, it's not gonna work, I get it. And, and I'm not gonna here to judge you, you know, I, but I am gonna be very clear here. If you wanna know what it actually took me to do this, it took six years of me taking every course, every career development course I could, I could find, asking myself, who are the people who are generating six and seven figures by themselves? We call them entrepreneurs. We call them business development experts. They're not us. Oh, no, no, no. They're, they're definitely not us. They're a different kind of human being, right? We could never do what they do. Well, I had to learn that. You know, when, it, when we were broke and it was just me and my wife, that's what I was doing. And it almost killed me. It almost tanked my marriage. And at the time that the last of these signals came into play and I started activating them, obviously personally first, before I ever taught client one, um, we were so deeply in debt that we were six months out from bankruptcy. We had to take financial um, counseling. We had to do all sorts of stuff um, to pull us out, even when that had come in. And that was my sole focus. And I am particularly, particularly plugged in to this particular problem, right? So I want you to ask yourself, you've got the basics, you've got the roadmap here. Tell me how long it's going to take you to actually meaningfully put every single one of these pieces into action for your situation. 
if you would like to continue or if you feel like you've got the infinite bandwidth to do so, I wish you the best of luck. And I'm going to say, hell yeah, freaking make it unbelievably successful and make it beautiful. But if you don't have six years to spend mastering this or three years to spend or two years to spend or even one year to spend on this, if you just want to get on with your life and let the experts serve you, now is the time to do it. Because trial and error is the biggest chump game I knew I know that there was, and it's the one that I played for most of my adult life until I figured out a, a better way. And then finally, after those six years, when things started shifting, when I could bring on experts and get the support I needed, I sat down and I had a pretty heartbreaking moment because I sat down and it's like an ish. Cool, you don't have to worry about it anymore, okay? This problem that took you six years, that's done. It's scaling, everything's good. So you tell me what your dream is now. And it was shocking because I didn't really have an answer. You know, every day that you spend in a job search, the muscle of your vision and your ambition is atrophying. And that adds up. There is a price to that. So if you want to just allow yourself to enjoy the end result, stand on the shoulders of an expert. Let us help you. Let us guide you. Let us show you the pitfalls and show you the possibilities. And most importantly, let us bear some of this weight alongside of you so that you're never going to feel alone going up against these Goliaths, that you're gonna feel you're with not just an expert, but a community of people who are all generating light and doing this for the right reasons and are 100% committed to that pledge. If that is you, if that is where you are, if you know that what you need is the answer and the fast path, and you know that you are done feeling like a victim ever again for the number one thing that is responsible for your income, your future, the quality of your life. If you know that you are ready for that and you wanna make sure the way that that's gonna happen quick inside of those weeks period that we've been talking about is aligning your frequency, your strategy, and your actions all along the same path and getting that cooking. And once that happens, it, uh, um, as Darren told me, Anish, you know, I don't, I, this is, I don't mean this as an insult, but it feels boring in a good way because you get to that place and it's like, oh, okay, this is easy. You know, it's fun actually to, to have conversations. You know, my God, I'm, I'm talking with a managing director tomorrow. I couldn't get any of these people on the phone for six months, you know? And oh my God, this is an opportunity in a totally different industry. I've never thought about this, but I got to, you know? And what's it gonna mean? It gets fun again. It gets joyous again. And that's what I want you to feel. And if you, if that's where you're at, I want you to ask yourself, what it would, would it be worth to your sense of self, your earning power, and your ability to make an impact if you never, ever, ever had to think about job searching ever again? I want you to hold that in your mind. And I want you to remember that I promised you how to generate dream career opportunities without blasting out resumes how to negotiate as an equal with senior level executives and key decision makers. Decision makers, so you know that it's extra, extra, extra hardcore. How to command a premium asking price, how to systematize and scale your efforts, and most importantly, most importantly, how to bring true abundance and choice back into your career and end this cycle of scarcity, passivity, and compromise that holds back so many others. I don't wanna live my life like that, and that's not the example I wanna to set to my kids. And if that's you, this is what you need to win. You need to amplify the why, own your authority lane, use the secret weapon, diagnose the illness, and invest in expert help. If you combine those five signals, here's what you have to look forward to. A 75% plus reduction in traditional job search times, an increase in the total number of opportunities in play by a factor of 15 to 20X, and a double to triple digit percentage gain in compensation. That's the norm. That's the norm when you take someone who can be an authority in their space and make them the authority in their space because no one's doing it just to do it. We're doing it to see concretized re results. And if that's exactly what you know you need right now, you have a choice, okay? You can either take everything I've given you, you're gonna get the replay. I recommend you watch that if that's where you're at and you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna do the best with what I have. Things are relatively okay right now. I'm gonna try to implement this. And hell yeah, dude, you should absolutely do that. But if you know that you don't wanna keep trial and erroring this, and you know that there's a difference between going on WebMD and actually working with the best oncologist on planet Earth, then this is for you. 
my team and I have set aside some time to speak to you personally about how you can apply these ideas to your career starting today. Whatever your biggest challenges are on this front, we have seen it and we know how to overcome it. On this session, here's what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna get real. We're gonna lift up the hood on your particular situation. I want you to, to, to get ready to talk in a real way about everything that you've been experiencing here, including your dreams, including what you've developed here. And we're gonna craft a step-by-step -step plan for hitting your coronavirus immune career goals for this year, all right? No matter how bold or aggressive and doing it in the most effective, joyous and empowering way possible. And the cost for this is absolutely free. And here's why, okay? Um, number one, uh, and we're, we're doing this because our goal is to free as many people as we humanly can. But just to be clear, this is not for everybody, okay? This is for people who have some kind of expertise in solving a major business problem or challenges, right? You can't be fresh out of college. You can't just be jumping into it. You got to have a couple of years behind your belt. You don't have to have verbalized all of this or made it perfect. That's part of what we'll do or part of what we'll look at. But you've got to be, you've got to have something there, okay? You've got to be sick and tired of traditional job searching. Nothing me nor my team a fellow coaches are going to tell you has anything to do with the norm. So if you're just trying to optimize the norm, please do not bother. Do not bother setting this up. Okay. This is for people who want to go all in into the path of winners. That's it. You must be absolutely exceptional at what you do and willing to take full responsibility for the success of your career. We serve the fiercely committed, not those in search of an easy hack. That is not what this is unless it has not been plainly obvious, okay? And if that is you, I want you to book a session right now. Here is the link, anishmajumdarcoaching.com forward slash apply. The last time we did this, we booked out for about a month and a half after the webinar. So if this is something that interests you right now, do not pass go, do not re reactivate your phone, hop on right now, set this up. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna see our scheduler right up there. Um, book a time that works for you. Click on a time that works, um, the faster the better, and then you're gonna see a couple of questions to answer. These questions are so we can better understand what your situation is, and so we can make sure not an, a minute of your time is gonna be wasted when you're speaking with us. We have one goal here, and that is to free as many of those who are willing as we possibly can and to get them into a place where they can be that light for their loved ones. If that is you, I want you to do this right now. And guys, I really wanna thank each and every one of you for joining me on this, for coming with me on this journey. Um, I'd be very happy, uh, Mara, if there are any questions um, I could answer there. Uh, but just as a little tip to all of you, um, just remember what I said. You know that a defense mechanism is going to be a uh, but coronavirus, right? So before you leave this session, I want you to write down a couple of reasons why what you do must happen now and boil it down. Because you know, um, if you're if you're if you're going to encounter that as a defense, you got to have some really well thought out ammo there. So craft that ammo right now. Don't 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 hide your head in the sand. Look at that problem and actually challenge yourself to come up with those urgent reasons so you have something to go in there with. Um, but Mara, I can, I'd be happy to, to answer anything if, if, uh, if, uh, if you've got some, some, some goodies there. Yes, thank you so much, Anish, for a very eye-opening and informative um, lesson. Oh, so you're welcome. So a few questions come in. Um, we have time for a couple of uh, short questions. So one person asked, um, you know, based on your, your description of the LinkedIn method, if it means that you shouldn't put your open to job opportunities on your LinkedIn profile. Correct. There should be there should be absolutely nothing on your profile that says anything like that. Um, it's okay to activate the um, the setting in LinkedIn that says like you're open to career opportunities. That's a setting. No one's going to do that. But there should be nothing verbal on your thing that says unemployed, open to job opportunities, looking or anything like that. If you have a a time gap uh, in your in your history, I would seriously consider uh, creating a standalone section, independent consulting, whatever you want to whatever you want to um, call it, I would place that in as a, a filler for that for that gap. Look at it this way, guys. Um, even if you're like, look, I'm not a consultant, that's not what I want. Following a path like this, initiating dialogue like this with business leaders, there is really no fundamental difference between you doing that for a high-level role versus you doing that for a high-ticket consulting thing. It's semantics. 
you're still having discussions, you're still doing all of that. So I would really own that period and do that. But yeah, I would take away any 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 verbiage like that. It doesn't help, and it's not a it's definitely not a barrier. Um, most employers out there, um, they're assuming that if you're in play, you've got things in play. You don't have to you don't have to go uh, you don't have to verbalize it in that way. So another question that we got was um, someone was saying that they have answers to you know the dream job, but multiple answers and different areas of focus, and they're having trouble focusing on one. So mm -hmm. they choose one. Do they try and do all four? What's the best track there? The the ultimate test for kind of like like what that dream outcome looks looks like for you, or or what or what you're looking for, and it's fine to have multiple multiple goals there but usually that's a signal that you need to sort of like take the camera and just pull it back and that's where the fear is because if we pull the, the the camera back that means we're taking responsibility for whatever the connective tissue is here between these roles right so i really want want you to ask yourself okay is it the fact that i'm being split between multiple things i want to do or is it the fact that these are all different expressions of the same core thing that I'm doing? Like the same core change that I'm making happen is are these just five manifestations of that? So really look at what those what those connective tissue pieces would be and, and really challenge yourself to pull, 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 pull back. See what that really looks like for you. But um, just remember, there's nothing wrong with having um, multiple targets there. But if we're talking, um, radically different roles that have no association with each other and are completely different, that definitely deserves to be looked at. Um, you cannot go in and play this hard game with anything weak sauce like that. And, and definitely it can't be like, well, I want to be a marketing director, but I also want to be a general manager of a company. If that said, that's a little naive. And, and that, that would require digging deep and getting very real and then committing to what you think is going to be the strongest path. You can always change that. You can always you can always um, um, alter that. Remember, if discussion happens first, who cares what the ultimate job title looks like? Like that's an immaterial thing that everyone obsesses over. Like, oh, it's not a manager. It's not a, well. You don't have anything right now. So get the conversations going. Identify the need. Diagnose what is really going on there. Bring them to the banks of the water, and then figure out whatever that title looks like. We have plenty of people who have had to create titles for themselves because they got there. There's no clear parallel to it. So be it, that's all good. So just a couple of pointers, hopefully that helps in terms of just getting some clarity on that one. Thank you. Um, I think we have time for one more question. And this question has come from a few people. How do you identify the right person to reach out to on LinkedIn who isn't HR or isn't that gatekeeper you described? Mm -hmm. um, and Please. How do you respond? How do you handle it if they don't respond? Yeah, so uh, there's two answers there, and I'm and I'm going to be real with you guys. Number one is this: um, uh, if you're looking at uh, any any target, whether they're particular industries, particular companies you're looking at, there's going to be multiple people usually at a company that of which this would resonate, but they would fall into basically two camps. One camp would be people who have direct authority to create a role for you or get you the inside track to something that's emerging there. So CEO, someone, uh, maybe chief growth officer, chief strategy officer, people like that. Then you're gonna have people who are high up, but they're ancillary. They're running in a parallel track to you. They can't create a role for you, but they are high level up there. My number one preference would be the first one first, and then when it's exhausted to look at the, at the second. But within that, what I would look for are, who are the people who have direct skin in the game, and are most likely to be feeling the negative ramifications of what I do. In other words, um, if what you do is you're building up uh, teams, you're building up people, you're building up cultures, you're building up performance, who's feeling that right now at the high level the most, right? Probably people who have skin in the game for growth, skin in the game for talent, maybe is there a chief people officer there? Who's feeling it the most right now? And then take a look at them, make an educated guess, and that's who you should probably be dialoguing with. But just realize that it's not a question of, um, it's not a one-off type thing. It's like, okay, if I'm targeting X company, I've probably got five or six really strong people here. I'm gonna look at that. And again, having my expert hat on, ask myself, who of these people have the strongest entry point? 
Do I have mutual connections with them, right? That's one, right? Do, do we have a, you know, a shared past um, you know, in some company or some industry? The stronger the entry point, that should also come into play there. So just be analytical about that, but also the second part, you may not like this answer, but I'm just being real with you. It can't just be a one and done type deal. You know what I said about being absolutely relentless? I meant that, which means that if you're looking at companies, that person um, connect, let's try to initiate that. Simultaneously, let's go for this person. Simultaneously, let's go for this. Simultaneously, let's do a second search and, and, and take a look over here. It's gotta be relentless, guys. And it cannot be tied into any one person and then I'm done. That's passive job seeker crap. We don't, we don't target in that. I want you to make a promise to yourself right now that I will fulfill every single one of those dream outcomes one way or the other, come hell or high water, or I will freaking die trying. That's the level of intensity. And if you bring that kind of intention to everything, including LinkedIn, figuring out small things like who's gonna connect with me, who's gonna dialogue with me, are gonna look like just that, just small. So just remember, have some fun with it, play with it. And remember, every time you feel that hint of job seeker breath coming in, that's when you need to switch and pivot and take the ownership of, uh, of an expert. Even if it's something as simple as changing the verbiage on a message from I'm looking at career opportunities to um, I'm in discussions with business leaders on how to make this impact happen. And I would love your advice and, and to learn a little bit more about what your, what your journey is. That's a totally different response, right? That's a totally different start to that conversation. So just remember that as well as you move forward. Be relentless, guys. Now is the time. You've got the time. You're at home, right? So if you're not pursuing your dream, what are you doing? Now is the time to make that happen. Thank you. One really wonderful. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, and thank you to everyone who attended and submitted questions. Um, just as a reminder, we'll send you all an email with a link to a recording of today's webinar. Um, and I think that's about it, right? I, 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 I thank you so much for your help, uh, Mara, and to, to the whole team at Ivy Exec. Um, you guys are doing great work, um, and I really have so appreciated um, the opportunity to connect with all of you here. Um, just remember to all of you, lead with love, stay hungry, keep trying, and, and remember that if that calling in your heart is there, it's there for a reason. It's not there. more than where you are right now. So treat it as something sacred and go after it because fortunes are made every single day and you can absolutely be the very next person that it touches, all right? Um, sending much love, support, and positivity to each and every one of you out there today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much and have a great afternoon, everyone.